Welcome to the Tesla Economist. Please hit the thumbs up and remember to subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon. Um, it also allows us to uh, use uh, to, to move the, the cells uh, closer to the center of the, of the car um, because we don't have the, 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 the in the top one we've got that sort of all the supports and stuff so the, the volumetric efficiency of the structural pack is, is much better than a non-structural pack and we actually bring this, the cells closer to the center um, and uh, because they're closer to the center the, uh, it reduces the probability of of a side impact uh, potentially contacting the cells because they have it has to go in any kind of side impact has to go further in order to reach the cells i know i really am becoming the battery economist it's because as far as i can tell the economics of tesla mainly come down to the batteries i'm sorry if batteries aren't the most exciting topic for all of you but i'm doing what i can to try and make them exciting hopefully the fact that if we can uncover what is happening here before the rest of the market might give us an opportunity to leverage our positions or buy more shares with more conviction before everyone else catches on might make it a bit more interesting perhaps. Like I said before, this will potentially affect my investment strategy. I'll probably end up selling some shares to buy more leaps. It's funny, I get people commenting and trying to tell me that I'm trying to pump Tesla's stock price with my leap strategy, like as if I benefit from it or something. If anything, this strategy would actually hurt Tesla's stock price as it involves selling stock. I mean, so few shares that it would in no way make any difference at all to the stock price, but I'm certainly not pumping the stock. In fact, I should almost be flattered too for these people to think that I'm such an authority that I could even affect the stock price. No, I doubt my channel has any effect on the stock price. And no, I benefit in no way trying to convince people to buy leaps. I don't even promote any referral links for trading accounts that allow you to buy leaps. All I'm doing is sharing my investment strategy with you. I know a lot of you have a lot of conviction, like me, but limited resources. So it is a way I find to assist me and I enjoy all of you sharing your various strategies with me too. Anyway, I've been thinking more about what you will tell me. I love this community and I read just about all of your comments and reply to a great deal of them as well, as you probably noticed. But a lot of you are saying that the 4680 system won't use fewer cells. Firstly, they obviously use fewer cells as each cell is much larger. And yes, you all understand that too. So I'm guessing what you really mean is that they will not use less area of cells, which is probably a more accurate way to put it. I've been talking about how Tesla will keep the 4680 cells closer to the center of the car and the outside of the structure will not contain batteries so close to the edges, thus improving the polar moment of inertia, which is another way of saying the car will handle and corner that much better. But then I'm hearing a lot of people saying that I don't quite understand and that Tesla won't need fewer cells and I think I can understand where you are coming from. So I thought we would talk it through. Firstly, we obviously have some weight saving with the structure, with the battery pack becoming the structure of the car. Whenever we save weight, then this improves the vehicle's range. If the battery is the same size, then it will travel further with less weight. Therefore, it would be true that if there is a weight saving, that the vehicle could travel an equal distance than before with a smaller battery or fewer cells. Fewer cells also mean that there is a further weight saving and we get the same benefit. Tesla have started a virtuous circle of removing cells. Tesla claim that the cell to vehicle design removes 10% of the total mass of the car, which is a massive amount. Okay, weight savings are probably the easiest aspect to get our heads around, but what about the 4680 cell design itself? We're told that this will increase range 16%. In the same slide, we're also told that the 4680 cell holds almost five times more energy. The 4680 is a much larger cell, so we would expect a lot more power and energy from each cell. However, the range is only 16%. I believe the power and energy figures are comparing the 4680 cell to a 2170 cell, but the range is an overall figure. Why would you think 4680 cells mean more range then? This is simply comparing the 4680 form factor and size with the 2170. It assumes the same chemistry. Well, the volume to surface area ratio is much higher in the 4680 battery, thus reducing the size of the can that is used per kilowatt hour of actual jelly roll. Therefore, I think that this range increase is coming from the improvement of the cells weighing less per kilowatt hour due to less actual battery casing being required. The 4680 cells themselves weigh less per kilowatt hour, thus having an improved gravimetric energy density. Again, this would then be the same scenario as the structural battery pack. We're seeing weight loss from the casing, thus meaning the vehicle would have a further range on the same amount of kilowatt hours from a 2170 cell compared to the 4680 cell. This would of course again mean fewer cells are required to get the same range, 
thus entering the virtuous circle further. What's actually interesting is the volumetric density of the 4680 cells is not actually as high as the 2170 cells, as in the 4680 cells take up more volume to create the same amount of kilowatt hours than the 2170 if using the same chemistry. However, because the 4680 cell is slightly taller than 2170, the actual area the 4680 takes up is not quite as much. In addition to that, the fact the 4680 batteries are used as structure means that there is more area there for the batteries as you're able to remove the excessive structure. In other words, 2170 has a better volumetric density over 4680, but 4680 has a better area density over 2170. In fact, I'm not sure I've heard people even compare area densities, but if you're using cylindrical batteries, it probably is an apt comparison. Of course, the fact that the 4680 batteries mean we can remove excess structure means the batteries can be taller without affecting ride height or clearance. This is a common trait with everything we find at Battery Day. Everything that's been done just seems to be better for everything in so many other ways. The gift that keeps giving. Okay, so we've explored the weight saving aspects of Battery Day. Now, like I said, these are all reasons to have fewer cells but these are all also reasons to have fewer kilowatt hours of battery in the vehicle too. Remember, if you save weight and improve range 30%, then you can probably get the same range with about 30% fewer kilowatt hours. The math doesn't revert back to 30% exactly, but surely you all understand it indicatively at least. Then we move on to the chemistry, and I believe this is where the complexity lies. Now, due to the new battery day chemistry inside the cells, mainly the cathode and anode updates that we're referring to, they're supposedly increasing range 24%. Now, I think this is the part that affects the actual all-important gravimetric energy density. With the new chemistry, Tesla are able to get 24% more range from the previous 2170 chemistry, and that if Tesla simply replaced the chemistry of the 2170 cell with this new chemistry, the vehicles should get 24% more range. Now, does that mean that if each 2170 cell that gets about 10 watts an hour per cell, then this new chemistry would get 24% more watts an hour? or around 12.4 watt hours per cell? No, not exactly. It just means that the vehicle overall would get 24% more range. Now, when the Model 3 standard range was still using nickel-based cells, it was using just a 50 kilowatt hour battery, whereas the long range had 75 kilowatt hours, 50% more usable kilowatt hours for the long range, yet a range difference of about 90 miles, 263 miles versus 353 miles. Granted, the long range has dual motors and an additional powertrain, extra weight and more performance, all of which affects range too. But even factoring in all of that, it would still appear that you need more than 24% more batteries to get 24% more range. This would imply that the actual gravimetric energy density of 4680s would be higher than 24% with the new chemistry, compared to the 2170 batteries, perhaps at a guess at around 33%. In fact, Elon has even hinted that Tesla could improve energy density as much as 50% when compared to the 2170 cells. If the 2170 cells are at 260 watt hours per kilogram, then this new chemistry could take it closer to 350 watt hours per kilogram. And then if we add the cell design, then it probably is about 50% improvement in energy density at around 390 watt hours per kilogram. He did say this could take three or four years as well, which is still one or two years away from now. It may take a little time to perfect the chemistry and get the yields and results we are hoping, but the weight advantages of the structural battery packs and 4680 cells should be felt immediately. Anyway, this chemistry would mean that each cell does have a higher kilowatt hour within the same space, which again would mean that fewer cells will be required to generate the same amount of energy. And again, if we have fewer cells, then that also saves further weight, and in turn means that we need fewer cells to get the same range more of Tesla's virtuous circle of weight reduction. I hope that clears it up for you and why I think the 4680 may use fewer cells to reach the same range. This was also what Elon was talking about on Battery Day. I can't believe how many times I watch Battery Day or clips and still take away something from it. The best analogy is it is like an onion. There are just layers and layers of information you can take away from it. It was absolutely mind blowing back then, but it's still impressing me again and again to this day. I just can't believe we're actually going to get to see these 4680 vehicles very soon. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon.